The Constitution enjoys every judicial officer to be fair and serve justice to all without jurisdiction. Is that a reflection of you? That is uh, the Sholei matter, which I... I, I didn't say it's the Sholei matter. That is the Sholei matter, which I decided. Yes. And I, dis I remember those very words from one judge of who sat in that Court of Appeal panel, which, which dealt with that decision in the, in the Sholei matter. And the way I understand the role of a Court of Appeal judge, and we have a lot of writings on that, a Court of Appeal judge should never, ever be involved in that kind of frolic on a, about a judge who handled the matter below him. To me, that was completely out of step. All the other judges in that panel held, considered that matter in a very considerate way. And I believe, in my view, that particular judge was guilty of the very things he was talking about there. And that is one matter which I still believe ought to have gone to the Supreme Court so that all those issues are dealt with, so that we know who indeed was partial and who was impartial in that matter. That is my belief. OK. Again, one of, the other, one of the other judges also described you like this. I don't know whether you agree. It is clear from the uh, phaseology, uh, fer uh, the phraseology employed by the learned judge that he took an extremely dim view of the manner in which the appellant dealt with the disciplinary process that led to the removal of the first respondent. The learned judge considered the entire process as fatally flawed and contrary to the law. He saw this as asymptomatic of an enthusiastic and insistent of a zealous even attempt by the appellant and its chairman in the person of the Honorable Chief Justice to hear the matter and deal with the first respondent in a partial manner, even if it meant breaching the law in the process. With respect to the learned judge, he appears to have floundered in the same marshy bog of erroneous zeal with which he charged the appellant, and that is why the learned judge collapsed and conflated two separate and distinct disciplinary processes with, with the inescapable consequence of erroneous conclusion. Is that a reflection of you? Uh, Commissioner, I must first of all say, uh that, uh, and that's also another judge, it's not uh, one of the yeah, judges. Commissioner, I know you are involved in that, in that matter as a commissioner. Uh, and um, I know uh, it involved the judiciary as a family. And some people have taken diverse views on what happened within our judicial family. And so emotions, a lot of emotions were expressed not just in a judicial uh, decisions that were made at my level and the Court of Appeal, which reflect largely what some of the wa wordings used. Okay, in uh, paragraph 125 of your judgment, this is what you said also. It is difficult to understand the shortcut taken by the very imminent papers of the legal profession in a situation where the mandatory procedure that will have been followed speaks so loudly from the express provisions of Section 32 and Regulation 25 of the Judicial Service Act 2011. That's what you said. Again, I say, Commissioner, you are involved in that decision, no, which, just which, what... which, which I criticized. You are involved in it, Commissioner. And uh, again, I say, this is a decision which should have gone to the Supreme Court. I do not agree. You do not agree with your own statement? I do not, I, I mean, uh, that was a judicial decision which I believe uh, will, stood, will stand the test of time in the academia. And that is where it belongs because it was impugned. Okay. And I don't have to answer for it, but posterity will and academia will. And if it ever sees the light of the day, if they, it had seen the light of the day at the Supreme Court, and maybe we'll be talking a different story. So, I, Commissioner, in a matter where you are involved, 
I think you should not take so much time on it because you also have personal views about it. Okay. Uh, I have no personal views, but let me ask you, leave alone the language used by yourself and the judges, and let's come to, and that's why I said we want to test your understanding of the law. And in this case, you equated disciplinary matters to that of a criminal trial. And you used, I think, uh, the law of criminal trial in all it is aspect and that what you overturned. Is that the position? Completely misunderstood by the Court of Appeal decision. But it's not true. That is not my understanding. So you don't and I'm saying again, you are involved in that matter. You cannot have an objective judgment about what I said there. It's only an independent tribunal, in this case a Supreme Court, which can pass judgment. So you completely don't agree with the decision of the, Supreme, of the Court of Appeal? And I will leave it there. I don't agree with it. I, I'm, I'm bowed by it. I don't agree with it. Well, I'm, I'm not supposed to agree with it.